my uh, patient is nine year old beneath with a uh, deformity of the left elbow and uh, swelling in the left elbow. Uh, so uh, sustained for following a trauma about three years back, this uh, uh, deformity is non-progressing. And uh, on um, the, uh, there is no history of any tuberculosis and, uh, and physical examination is normal. No, no, I think this one, I'll just interrupt you there, sorry, I'm interrupting. Don't say no history of tuberculosis. Say no history suggestive of tuberculosis. So you do not know for certain it is, isn't it? So you just look at the suggestion. Suggestive of tuberculosis. Proceed. So physical examination, general examination is normal and there are no features of I, I, Again, it's coming to a short case, so you just tell your uh, diagnosis problem. Diagnosis. Diagnosis is a non-progressive cubitus valgus uh, deformity. And I would like to give a differential diagnosis of uh, um, uh, neglected montagia fracture and uh, give your findings in favor of your there is a uh, cubitus valgus deformity is the elbow fully extended no not extended there is a fixed friction deformity of the do you think it's a wise thing to say about valgus varus when the elbow no. is not fully extended no it should be a yeah, but in the exam, I think it might be a problem if you say about vans. You have to be very careful. If you cannot extend the elbow, do not comment about varus or valgus of the elbow. You are in for trouble. You should be able to supinate the forearm well. You should be able to extend the elbow well. Full extension must be there. Otherwise, you will be liable for problems. Because your first statement was the child has got a cubitus valgus. And then you say that he's got a fixed flex and deformity of the elbow. These are terms, either one term can be used, either the valgus or the fixed flex. Both cannot go together. Okay, right. What are the other findings that you have? And there is a mass, uh, inspect, on inspection it is visible, and it is confirmed by pal palpation that, that the mass in the anterior mass uh, that is uh, moving with the pronation and supination, and this is a radial head. So the radial so is, radial it's not articulating with the humerus? No. It's not articulating. It's a dislocated radial head. It's a dislocated. No. Again, the expression, the way you put it, there is a mass. I'm immediately thinking of a tumor. Yeah. I'm immediately thinking of a tumor. Don't use the word mass. If you think it is the radial head, there's a prominence. It's a prominence. There's a bony prominence on the lateral side of the elbow, which is rounded in in on palpation, moves on movement of the forearm, moves on pronation and supination, seems to be the head of the radius. That's how you describe it. Okay? There is some, uh, there is thickening and irregularity over the um, proximal part of the ulna. <coughs> The line is thickened then? And thickened and there is a... There is thickening, thickening only, so I can feel only. Okay. And irregularity is also. So, Go ahead, what about the pro distal uh, humerus? Distal humerus is normal. There are three point body relations which are normal. On palpation there is no irregularity or thickening of the supracondylar uh, ridges. And, uh, uh, there is no tenderness over the uh, or the any of the uh, bony bony prominences in the polygranon epicondyl middle epicondyl lateral epicondyl and still humerus. And the alanum is strong but there is no subluxation. Okay. What is the range of movement? Range of movement flexion is um, zero uh, compared to the other side there is a 20 degree restriction of flexion on the left side. And uh, there is. Uh, See, it's always nice to say the range of zero, zero to one hundred eighty degree flexion. How is it zero when you have a fixed flexion deformity? On zero, so it's a ten to one hundred eighty degree. See, these are the things which are likely to keep on uh, piling up in the examiner's mind. Here is a patient who's got a fixed flexion deformity. So your range of movement, when you say that okay, it starts off from twenty to whatever, then I know that he's uh, he has everything in focus. When you start you're saying that it's from zero. Then I said, which is right? Is the range of movement from zero right? Or the uh, finding of fixed flexion deformity is right? Yes. Extension is... 
So, your first statement that it's a valgus may be more acceptable than your fixed flexion deformity. <laughs> attitude, again, we are coming back to attitude again. I think we already spent quite some time on attitude earlier. Yeah? Valgus is acceptable because there is hyperextension. You can fully extend it, fully soften it, and then you measure for the long axis of the forearm and the hip, you know how? And you know the angle. If you reduce the range of the automatic, if you reduce the range of the automatic, I think we talked about mass, which is made from the radial protecting, but now the mass is not there. I was expecting something else. This is angle. This was this way. Mass united from one area probably. A slight bowing which is in this way. It's an anterior Boeing, anterior yeah. type of Boeing. It's an anterior Boeing. And it's lying anterior. That's why I started looking for that. That is how anterior. Clearly anterior. So, what, are, what about the rest of the movements? Supination, pronation? Flexion is restricted, yes, compared to the opposite side. Pronation, supination is full. Extension is exaggerated, apparent. Basically because the ulna is bored anteriorly. Because you can feel that little angulation when I... That's when I started looking for extension. Until then we took your word for a restriction of flexion. I mean restriction of extension. Yes, anterior. No, no, no. It's not hypertrophy. It's nice and smooth and round. Okay, he's, uh, yeah, you said that the radio ca capillar articulation is not yes. there at all, is it? Yes. The radial has come out. Is there a shortening of the ulna? No shortening. No shortening. Mm -hmm. Did you measure? Yes, measure. Both sides. 13, almost 13 centimeters. Mm -hmm. Any neurological deficit? No neurological deficits. Huh? No, no neurological deficits. Which uh, neurological deficit you would have expected? I don't know. Check for the Allah now. Allah now. You will expect Allah now? That also. Huh? Two years. Tadi Allah now. Also. And post. Yeah? And your In the Monteity of practice dislocation, what would you have expected? Postural intrusions. Postural intrusions now. When do you expect a valgus deformity in the elbow to produce an Allah now? And a nerve uh, complication? One year, one and a half years down the line. It's called tardy, isn't it? It's going to take a long uh, period of time before it starts up. Okay. Of course, you should keep that in mind. No doubt about that. Okay. Sunderland's book on peripheral nerve injuries gives it around 10 years. But it can happen anytime after 5 years. But the classical description is around 10 years. That's the book reference, Sunderland's textbook of Berfil Nerves. So I have uh, taken X-ray of the um, elbow joint, left elbow joint. The elbow joint? Uh, also the... Uh, the elbow with forearm. Forearm. You're looking at Montegia, please. It's like a very, very commonly missed also in case of why that is been missed. Because only elbow was done, probably. Yeah, sometimes it is very common to have the mistake. Either the middle of the radius and the forearm is taken or either the proximal part is taken or either the distal part is taken. So always take the any child injury, take the x-ray including proximal and distal joints also. So that is true for all x-rays. When you take, you should take the entire thing. Okay, x-ray, right. okay, can you have the x-ray? <laughs>
But even then, there's a normal ulna going which is there, isn't it? Of course, what little is seen here, you're not able to make out. It is like they said, yeah, it's practiced somewhere around that day. Normally, there's a going posterior, is it? So, what, is your diagnosis confirmed or you still take your diagnosis? Diagnosis is confirmed. Read the X-ray. Yeah, so there's an, uh, so an X-ray of the uh, elbow joint, AP and lateral base of a skeletally mature child, um, showing the um, uh, proximal, proximal part of the ulna and the humerus. And uh, there is a um, radial head dislocation to the anterior part, and uh, uh, there is an uh, ulna bowing anterior. Radio. Yeah, radio why you said the radial head is dislocated? Radio capillary lines are not in alignment. Alignment? How do you draw the line? Usually, the, a line drawn through the proximal part of the radial head will pass through the middle of the capillary. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. In whatever middle of the capillary? In whatever part of the capillary. In non projections. That's the word used. Yes. <laughs> so, it's a diagnosis is confirmed. That's a montage. Yes. What will you do? What classification is normally followed? Yes. Uh, bad out classification. <laughs> what type is this? This is type 1 classification. Type 1. Type 1. Is this common? Which is the more common type of classification? Montage that you get? Type 2. Yeah? Okay. Go ahead. Mm. What will you do? So, um, since, since this is an old dislocation, so we will have to uh, then ulnar osteotomy, bending ulnar osteotomy, and uh, ulnar osteotomy. Yes. Then uh, at, at what position the radius will reduce? We have to hold in that position. The osteotomy is done at the apex of the bone. Then so you say the principles. Yes. So you will do an osteotomy of the ulna. Yes. And uh, we'll try to re we'll reduce the radius acutely. Will you be able to reduce it acutely or you after, might have, yeah. After the osteotomy? After the osteotomy, you cannot reduce without an osteotomy. No way it will come without osteotomy. If you go back, if you know, you would use osteotomy. It will spring back. So what are the principles here? Why the radial is out? What are the problems in the It's Why uh, to cut the... Uh, yeah. Alnoids uh, behaves, yeah. this radial head in alnoids behaves like a um, chain like a circle. Okay. So, so what if one so part of it is deformed, then uh, other part may also be affected. So we have to correct the deformity and reduce. Uh, so it's only deformity is also there. What is the things you can see also? You see the the radial head. It is not only the anterior dislocated. It is a little proximally migrated also. What is the reason that it is proximally migrated? He was asking. Have you measured something on TV? Bicep. Yeah, that's why you should, your ulna should have, actually on clinical examination, showed some element of shortening. Yes. You would have expected that to happen, right? Yes. So you not only need to correct that deformity, you also need to achieve length. Yes. Otherwise, the radial it is not going to go in place. This achievement of length as well as deformity correction, would you like it to be done acutely or in a staged manner? Acutely. So that means, which means you have, there will be a lot of soft tissues, yes. soft tissues which are going to be stretched. What, what so are the advantage of doing acutely? What are the advantage of doing gradually? That's why. So it can be displayed both in the literature. Yeah. But why you need to do acutely? Why you need to do in a stage procedure? If you do the acutely, yeah, there are a lot of tension also in that and you have to remove the lot of tissue from the notch which is coming for the radial head. There are chances there, there are subtle chances at present supination formation is fine, but you may lose a few degree of range of motion. Very, very common. That's why you do it acutely. Sometimes when you do about the acutely, you have to open the lot of wage on the ulna. So it will not be very good in the portal side. You have to put the graft on that side. Yeah, you might have to do an oblique osteotomy so that you can get length as well as get bone contact, or, uh, reduce the radius. So, most of the times, uh, people would prefer to do a gradual, uh, gradual correction, right? Get back the length, get back, uh, correct the deformity, let the radial head go back into place. 
and then fix the align the position in which the rating is it's stable. Yeah? You don't plan a rating attack session? It's two years. Two. Children, usually. And adults. If it's an adult, we can. No, yeah. If it's an adult. Never, never, never decide to do a rating attack. Why? 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 You might think in terms of doing a radial excision two years down the line, but not in a child. So that should, option should not be used in the exam. Best answer in this case, you have to ask the parents that I discuss with the parents and decide what they want and decide that. That is option to leave it to do for the one stage or two stages there. You don't say jump and say I have to do this surgery. It is so how late you can reduce the result is there up, up to three functionally normal and uh, no movements are full, no functional disability uh, presented at one and a half year. One and a half, we can undo up to three years. More than that, there are literature doesn't support and there are problems that radial head will get deformed. It will not sit in the notch. Yeah. Yes. yeah, because the radial head, uh, when it's lying outside, it becomes more spherical. Yeah. It's uh, no longer the annular shape that we uh, see, the ring shape we see. The shape of the head radial head changes. Then to get it reduced back is putting a deformed radial head into the, uh, in articulation with the capital, which is likely to be a problem. Yeah, that will give pain. The, form, the pro problem that there is no, uh, uh, at, patient, at present the patient is not experiencing any difficulty, does not mean anything. Because this child is going to develop problems subsequently. Mm. So instability is there. The child is only young, so young. You have seen it. If you don't treat it, you know the, the natural consequence of the thing is that elbow is going to be unstable over a period of time. So then at that stage, you have much lesser options. So I would think that it is justified, even though the child has no problems at present, to go and attempt to treat it now. Because you are likely to prevent a subsequent problem which is going to be there. So, the supports up to three years. No, it entirely depends on the shape of the radial head because the, the limiting part is the shape of the head. If it is not normal, putting it in will cause pain. Look at the three year as the critical part, but as the shape of the head of the radius, as we see on the x-ray or you palpate clinically. If it doesn't feel smooth on palpation and not as nice, this feels nice and round on palpation. You can feel it nicely. You pronation, supination, feel it. If it feels irregular, I wouldn't do it.